So creating a form is probably the most difficult part about web development. Like you have to not only create all the inputs you need, you also have to validate them. For example, you have to validate the username is let's say all lowercase or the password is actually inputted by the user and whatever email the user wrote is actually an email and not something else which can get a little bit difficult or complicated and boring but Vue.js has a cool plugin called Vue Formulate using which you can build a functional form in, in very short time for example like here you can have validations you can have errors all with just a few lines of code so in this guide i will show you how to use vformulate it will be a basic introduction guide if you like the tutorial do not forget to like comment and also subscribe click on the bell icon to get notified about the future videos so i'll first write our usual html boilerplate now if you go to the installation page of viewtail viewformulate uh, you will see that the preferred way is by using npm on yarn but we are going to use it directly in browser which is which can be done but there is a little bit difference which is explained here that i will also explain so we'll go to the js deliver cdn page and i'll copy the js file and paste it in my body not in my body uh, the body of the html file you get it right and i'll copy the theme file which is called snow which is the default theme uh, what did i just do and i will paste it in my head tag all right so also do not forget to include the vue.js script tag so let me just do that perfect now view formulate is ready to use all right so first thing first i will need a place to mount it so i'll create a diff called app where i will mount our fuse.js app so let me create a script tag and first i need to tell view that i want to use view formulate so i'll write view.use view formulate And then I will create the view app. So EL will be the div with ID app. And now view formulate is ready to use. So the basic use of view formulate is by using its components. So the first component that it provides is called formulate input. Now notice that this does not work. So this is basically the limitation that was stated there. So this is what you would use if you used it with npm or yarn or maybe included it in a single file component. But since we are directly loading it to DOM, this does not work. Instead, I have to write it in hyphenated form. And also I will need a closing tag. As you can see here so this is not only true for this formula input tag so anytime you if you go to the docs like here so you see there are tags like formulate form so this will also become hyphenated so formulate hyphen form and we'll need a closing tag so this is what you have to remember if you want to use it in DOM so as you can see we have a by default a text input here and can add side something here now we can change what it outputs by using a type attribute so formulate input and if I write type equals text area I get a text area in order to create components in the form you just have to supply the appropriate type you do not have to remember the name of all the input classes for example if I want to input a button I would write this
type equals button and by default it creates a submit button so I can actually change the level here sorry and it changes the level and I can also pass type equals submit if I want to create a submit button which creates a submit button and if I press it the form will submit but there is no form there are just four random elements but we'll see how we can create a whole form we can also create checkboxes by using the type checkbox so you can actually go to the docs and here you will have all the types so you can have things like group or you can have things like select slider etc so I recommend you go to the docs and see how to use all of the components now the most difficult part about a form is as you know validation I do not want the user to enter some incorrect data or maybe some leave out some required data but view formulate makes validation a breeze so I can add a few validations for example I can write validation equals email so this converts it into an email type so I can only write emails here as you can see it says please enter a valid email address so if I write anything that is not an email address it will give me an error but as soon as I write something that is an email address the error will go away similarly I can make something required by using the validation required now if I try to keep it empty it will say that text is required I can also combine one or more validation options by using this bar syntax so this combines both the email and the required validation here as you can see I can also match length so min 5 if I write min colon 5 it means that it should be at least 5 in length So I can also use custom regular expression to match it. So let's take an example. Formulate input. So here I have written matches colon this regular expression. So if you are not familiar with regular expression, it says it matches a digit. Or in other words, whatever I write in this field must include at least one number. So for example, if I write something like this, it will not work it says text is not an allowed value but if I include a digit it works so you can write any valid regular expression here it can be as complex or as simple as you wish now you have of course noticed here it says text so that's that this text this word comes from the name argument so I have not passed any name argument that's why it shows text if I write a name which you should do if you are writing form example like this let's say call it value then the error will actually show value instead of text so you can write whatever name you want here it will show up here now you can go to the docs and go to the validation section section and the validation section what did I just say anyway and you can see there are a lot of validations so all of these so I suggest you go there and using these are easy most of them are just only one value and some of them takes take an argument like matches so you can go through them and like see how they are used so another feature that view formula provides is the model binding so model binding is just basically you have a data inside your view app and you are binding it to this input so whenever you change the value of this input this data will automatically change so let's take an example so here I have a data called form data which has an initial value now I want to bind this form data 
to this input so i can do that by using v model and then passing is in the name of the variable so now as you can see the default value shows up here now you can change it and if i see the value of the variable as you can see the updated value is being shown here so anytime you change this data this will automatically change finally let's see how we can build an working form so i want to build like a login form so let's see so the tag i can use is formulate form so i have two input one is for username and another one is for password so let's distinguish them so the first one is username and of course it is required and let's give it a label so as you can see the label shows up here let's do the same thing for the second one this one's name is password validation is required and label is password and of course its type is password you do not want everyone to see what i am typing in my password field so now as you can see it's a password and finally there should be a submit button so this one should have type submit and label should be login and now as you can see if i want to submit the form validation automatically kicks in and i cannot log in unless i enter this username or password so now i want to bind the models so this time i want to bind this form data to the whole form so my form has two inputs so basically my form data this time should be an object with two inputs or two properties so what i will do inside this formulate form tag i will bind the form data instead of binding it to individual inputs now if i write things for example like valid things and i check the data so as you can see it now has this username and the password has been set so basically the names of the properties username and password are the name attributes that you wrote here so using this you can get the data and also these model bindings are two ways so if i change any one of them for example if i change the username property of it to let's say a b c d you'll see it changes in the form too and finally how can i submit a form so that is easy so for that i need to create a method so let's say i create a method called submit and inside that i just print the form data and finally i have to bind this submit function to the submit method of the form or the submit event of the form so this will go inside the form formulate form tag so i will write add submit equals the name of the date form method and now if i fill up the form and press login you will see that it prints things here so basically like this and you will also notice one thing if any one of the validation fails this method is not called so this will guarantee you that the user whatever the user has in, entered in the form that is correct so you can you do not have to check anything like this if else like things like if username is not empty password is not empty etc 
and finally let's talk about error handling so for example suppose if your server returns some errors how can you show them so for example i am logging in and my server returns this username this account is not activated so how can i show that so for, for that i have two kinds of errors so one is an input error so which occurs when some of your input is rejected by the server and another one is form error which basically occurs for something else for example like an internal server error or network not available something like that so for that i'll have to set two attributes so first one is errors so i will set it to a data object let's say input errors and another one is form errors which i will set it to another data of course these two data does not this these two data do not exist yet so let's create them so the form errors data should be an array this will basically just an array of strings whereas the input errors data this will be an object so for each input you will have one error class or one or more errors so let's see how i can do that so for example suppose this submit function returns some error let's say it returns an internal server errors so that then i will set the form errors variable Uh, my bad this should be an array and not a string anyway so if i fill up the form and press login this error is generated this is basically a form error so that it shows up on the top and finally if let's say the server returns that my username is rejected let's say my account is not activated so that i will set the input errors variable and i will set its key so this input data should be an object so the error is related to the username field so this username comes from this name this name of this thing this name is the key so you'll have to remember this so this should be an array let's say account deactivated and again if i try to log in so it now shows up under the username so that the user knows that it is related to the username field and finally if you do not like the formatters to be sitting on the top you can actually move it anywhere you want so which is easy let's say i want to keep it on the keep it above the button so i'll just add a formulate error class or element And so this time it will show up here as you can see so that was just an introductory guide to view formulate there is a lot more about view formulate like generating forms using named forms themings etc but you can go to the their docs and see it, it using it is very easy so i, I hope you like this tutorial thank you